Hey guys, this video is on hybridization theory and multiple bonds, like double and triple bonds. So first, a couple of definitions. A sigma bond um, is the head-on overlap of any two orbitals. One example would be an s orbital from one atom with directly overlapping, head-on overlap, with say a p orbital on another atom. Now it could be an s with an s, a p with a p, or any hy two hybrid orbitals can also form sigma bonds. Every single bond that there is is a sigma bond. It's a head-on overlap. On the other hand, a pi bond is the sideways overlap of unhybridized p orbitals. These definitions are kind of important, guys. Um, sideways overlap of unhybridized p orbitals. So on one atom, we have a p orbital here. The other atom, p orbital here. Remember, a p orbital looks like two kind of lobes, um, and they overlap sideways. Um, because this sideways overlap does not um, overlap as much, a pi bond is weaker than a sigma bond. Every double bond that there is consists of one sigma bond and one pi bond. Every triple bond has one sigma bond and two pi bonds. So every single bond basically starts with a sigma bond, and if it's a double bond, you add a pi bond on top of that. If it's a triple bond, you add two pi bonds on top of that, which means for a double bond, you need at least one unhybridized p orbital on each atom. For a triple bond, you need at least two unhybridized p orbitals on each atom. So let's look at some examples of bonding. Um, start with ethane, C2H2. Um, this is the Lewis structure for, eth excuse me, ethene, or ethylene also, it's what it's called. Um, this is its Lewis structure, um, because each carbon has one, two, three electron groups, each carbon is sp2 hybridized. So if we look at um, the electrons in the carbon, so if carbon is helium 2s2, 2p2, so the valence electrons look like this. There are two electrons in the 2s orbital, two unpaired electrons in um, two of the 2p orbitals. Because it's sp2 hybridized, that means this two means we take two of these p orbitals here and mix them with this s orbital here to get three equivalent sp2 orbitals and we leave one 2p orbital unhybridized. <clears throat> That's really important, guys, because this is the double bond, and that means that there has to be, well, it means there's a sigma and a pi part to it, and for the pi part of this double bond to exist, we must have an unhybridized p orbital on each of these carbon atoms to overlap. And there it is right there. One electron from here, one from here, makes the pi part. The sig now the, the rest of these bonds here, the sigma bond in this double bond will be one of these sp2 orbitals um, with another of, with one sp2 orbital from the other carbon, and then the bonds to the hydrogen will just be an sp2 orbital from a carbon overlapping with a 1s orbital from, from a hydrogen. Looks like this. <clears throat> so this picture in the, the bottom left here. This is showing what we call the, the sigma framework. Or net. Um, and so the carbon, each carbon is sp2 hybridized, and these yellow lobes here, um, these are the all three sp2 um, orbitals. Remember, this is a trigonal planar um, geometry when it's sp2, 120 degree bond angle. So one, two, three different sp2 orbitals. One from each overlaps with the other carbons, sp2, to form a sigma bond and then the other two on each carbon overlap with the 1s on the hydrogen to form the sigma bond to the hydrogen, one, hydrogen atoms. Um, now the pi part of this double bond looks like this. Um, there's a p orbital on this atom that's not hybridized and one here. They overlap sideways. They share electron density through these two lobes. That's a pi bond. When we put these two pictures together, this guy, it's, it looks kind of like this, well, a lot like this really. Um, there's the sigma bond between the two carbons, sp2 with the sp2. There's the sigma bonds with all the hydrogens, and sp2 from the carbon with a 1s from the hydrogen for all four. And the pi part of the double bond between the two carbons is an unhybridized p orbital from each carbon overlapping with one on the other carbon. And that's the bonding in ethene um, in terms of hybridization theory and orbital overlap. So let's look at acetylene now, C2H2. Now in acetylene, there's a triple bond. And each carbon has two electron groups, one, two, and that tells us that that carbon is sp hybridized. So if we look at the electrons again, helium 2s2, 2p2, the valence electrons look like this. 
because it's sp hybridized that tells us that we take one that we take the 2s orbital and one of the 2p orbitals mix them together make two equivalent sp hybrid orbitals and that leaves two of these 2p um, orbitals unhybridized and that's important because remember this is a triple bond and a triple bond consists of one sigma bond two pi bonds that means we need two unhybrid or orbitals on each carbon atom there they are so one of these from this carbon overlaps with one of these from this carbon to form one of the pi bonds and the other one on this carbon the unhybridized 2p orbital overlaps with the un another unhybridized 2p orbital on this carbon to form the second pi bond of this triple bond and like before the sigma bonds to the hydrogens are uh, a hybrid orbital from the carbon sp in this case with one s orbital on the hydrogen looks like this so um, this is the the carbon um, and this is the 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 blue and the the red lobes are each side of one unhybridized p orbital so this is one p orbital here this is another p orbital here both unhybridized remember guys p orbitals when they're on the same atom are 90 degrees to each other and that's the case here um, and the sp orbital is going to be perpendicular to both of those guys so the the sigma framework looks like this we have an sp orbital from this carbon with an sp orbital from this carbon overlapping head-on to form a sigma bond um, the hydrogen and the other sp orbital in this car carbon overlap in a head-on manner to form the sigma bond between the hydrogen and the carbon likewise over here now this blue and red is one red and blue is one p orbital here this is one here they overlap sideways top and bottom to form one of the pi bonds the other pi bond is perpendicular to that red in here blue here um, it, this is another picture of it. it it shows the electron density kind of smeared out like it more likely is in the real atom but um, red and blue is one pi bond red and blue is another pi bond sigma sigma that's acetylene now let's look at one more molecule, carbon dioxide, CO2. So there's the Lewis structure. The central carbon has two electron groups on it, one, two, so it's sp hybridized. And the electrons look like this, um, 2 S, uh, helium, 2s2, 2p2. So when we hybridize these, we take the 2s, one of the 2ps, form two equivalent sp hybrid orbitals, leaving two unhybridized 2p orbitals behind. Again, that's important, guys, because this carbon is making two pi bonds, one here, one here. So it needs two different unhybridized p orbitals to do that. And when we look at the oxygen, okay, the ox each of the oxygens has one, two, three electron groups on it, so it is sp2 hybridized. So if we that means we take the 2s2 of the 2ps and mix them together to make three equivalent unhybridized, I mean, excuse me, hybridized sp2 orbitals. Um, we leave one of the un, uh, the two p orbitals unhybridized so that it can form a pi bond to the carbon in this double bond. And so look what we did with the electrons. Notice we left a single unpaired electron in the two p orbital. We had to do that because the pi bond needs one electron from the, the oxygen, one from the carbon. So we leave one un, and and it, if it was if this was paired up, it wouldn't be able to form a bond because the orbital would already be full. So we. Um, put the two paired electrons down here and that works out really well because each of these sets of two electrons in each of the sp2 orbitals corresponds to a lone pair here so this lone pair might be is one of these this lone pair is the other one and this sp2 orbital is what's going to form the sigma part of the double bond to the carbon with a head-on overlap of an sp orbital on this carbon and that's, that's the idea of um, multiple bonds um, and using hybridization theory and over, hmm, hybridization theory and orbital overlap to describe the bonding. There you go.